Hello, welcome to I Love Stocks. Today we're going to discuss the cannabis sector. And we've got a special guest today. He's a specialist in the marijuana sector. His name is Doobie. He's a member of our room. We're going to let him talk a little bit about himself and what he thinks of the uh, marijuana sector for the next year or two, or at least into 2021. And that's how we're looking at these trades into 2021. We do believe they're going to be bullish, but we've got to be patient and buy it support and sell it resistance. Now, uh, we're going to be talking charts. I'm going to let him talk about charts and the companies, and then I'm going to just kind of finalize each one of them where I think supports maybe. So we might have a little bit different numbers, but they're going to be pretty close. And if I like his numbers, I'm going to kind of just say, yeah, I think he's a spot on. So I want you to have your notes, your pencil and paper out, and we're going to introduce him right now. Doobie, welcome to I Love Stocks. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me today, man. You're welcome. Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Lance Doobie. Uh, I have been dealing with the marijuana sector for a very long time. You guys uh, know a lot about the, the grow factors of it all, what it takes to, if a crop is being a brought up the wrong way if it's grown the wrong way we have to watch for all that you know we always have to worry about mold and spider mites or anything that could really ruin a crop so i really know quite a bit about all that stuff and we're gonna go into first you guys that's i think that's enough about me we're gonna go first in the grwg jim's gonna bring up that yep we got you the website right here this is grow generation and it's been a very bullish trade and i'll let you have at it and i'll pull up your chart yeah as you guys can see as you brought that up it does have all its own uh grow supplies lighting you know they're a real big diversified company and and they're not too bad and if you we're going to pull up a daily chart here in a little bit also and we'll just go over that. But first, we're going to go over the news on it and some financials. So we'll let Jim bring that up real fast. There you go. Here we go. All right. First thing we're going to talk about, me and Jim were talking about this, was the public offering that went off on the 7th and the 9th. You go back to your daily charts, and if uh, you pull it up, we have a nice uptrend since then. So once it hit its high, I think of 39.84, we started seeing a pullback Friday, which to me was no surprise at all because we're going into a slow two next weeks, everybody. Looks like some profit taking here. If I jump over to my 15 minute screen, you can see where it pulled back on Friday and then kind of came back and consolidating in the after hours. I like using this 15 minute screen for the fact that it shows me that it's on an uptrend. So that gives me a strong, strong bullish outlook on the, on the stock. And then of course you look at your daily and that's just amazing. So we're going to jump back to our news on Alpha, Seeking Alpha Gym. Yep. And then we're going to scroll down. And as you scroll, as you see the rating summary right there, it's bullish. Wall Street's very bullish on it. And then you see the factor ratings. Now, the growth to me is about what it's about. I mean, the value, there's a lot of value in this in this company. The Obviously, this is from six months ago, everybody. So I'm sure they'll be doing a factor grade upgrade on those here by the first of the years. So now we're going to scroll down. You see the revenue per year. 
it's just been on an uprise. Earnings per share, pretty much the same thing as it's growing. And then we come down to earnings estimates. Earnings estimates for the next two years is looking decent. I mean, they, they're looking at growth and everything, so that is a good thing for the company. Now we're going to scroll down to momentum. This is just one thing I wanted to show between these four. The percentage rating on these between the S&P have just been crazy in the last year, everybody. If you caught the run from October to now, man, it was awesome. If you were in it from March till now, you you got to be happy. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the div pay is really cheap. It don't pay nothing right now. It used to, but it was really, really cheap and not really worth watching for. Now we're going to scroll down to the capital uh, structure. And this will be the last thing we'll talk about on GRWG, and we'll move on to the next one. You look at the cash and the debt. To me, that means everything. If you got that much more cash than you got debt, financially, you're sitting great. I could be wrong. I mean, Jim could uh, probably give a little bit of input on that. But to me, that's what I like to see everybody is cash growth over everything because now you're well protected if you have a crop that's going to go bad on you you're still well secured enough with enough cash to bring yourself back the following year yep. or on the next grow and they're usually producing them i want to say every four months three to four months getting products out and stuff so we're gonna switch over to true leaf now let me go ahead and talk about the chart a little bit okay and Right now, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the 200 right here. This is the 200 SMA. You can see we've had a pretty good little breakout back during the, uh, was that, uh, the 10th month, 16. We had that pretty nice little breakout. She kind of consolidated, mm -hmm. pulled back to support. And then we broke new highs. So I think we're doing, we're in a place now where we can kind of consolidate a little to the right, maybe pull back to support. And I'll show you on a 20 day where I'm thinking that might be. At low support, to me, the strong support is the triple top we had right here. And that's right here at 3676. If that thing pulls back, I'd like to see that hold in this channel. And then break on and break the resistance back up here. And that resistance is going to be right around 3963. So if, like it did over here previously, we kind of consolidated, went to the side. We had a big breakout. I think we're due for that now until the end of the year. And then beginning of next year, we should have another pop on this. But that's still a good play between 36 and 39 bucks. If it does pull back, yeah. that's where I'm going to be looking to get in at 36.76. If it yeah, pulls back. Yeah, I'm right back up. I agree with you there, Jim. Yep. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. And that's going to be uh, True Leaf. True Leaf. Gotcha. This company is the East Coast king. They have a lot of dispensaries over there on the East Coast. I mean, they are on the West Coast, too. I believe they're in California. Yep. Connecticut, um, Massachusetts. They got them in Florida, California, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. Yes, sir. And they to me are a great company they have a great product and everything and i can see nothing but an upside to them they are at some high levels right now they're definitely at their 100 percent fib levels um we're gonna go ahead and oops i'm sorry everybody if i got mugged there a little bit as we're looking at the charts here you guys i mean back here when it was 574 back in March. You can see nothing but an uptrend. Had one little pullback. I think that was in August. And I believe that was the, that news that came out that kind of hurt a lot of the pot stocks and they all pulled back. But since then, I mean, the trend line on the daily is just as strong as you, you'd like to see for these pot stocks, you know, because True Leaf, Cure Leaf, uh, and Planet 13, they don't get a whole lot of volume during the day, but their moves are remarkable. 
So, you know, for long term, it would have been great if you're in it. Anybody that did hold it from back here, congratulations. I have just been playing it in and out basically myself on Truly. I did hold it for a little while till it took that pop in March or August. I went ahead and got out, watched it dip back, bought back in, and I've gotten in and out a couple times on this. Uh, you look at the 15 minute chart, the last two days have been pretty consolidating in between uh, my support and resistance right there. So I'm hoping to see a little turnaround on True Leaf. But like I said, I'm watching for these pullbacks for the next two weeks of profit taking and then see what we see at the first of the year. Or like I said, I'm waiting for merger news. Um, we're going to jump over. I don't have too much to say about True Leaf except for it's a real strong company, you guys. I mean, the charts are showing you everything on the daily here, how strong it is. And we're going to switch over to the financials and everything. Jim, perfect timing. Thank you. Uh, they, their news, you know, they don't have too much, you know, some analysts got it undervalued, which is about right. But to me, I think they're just about to their peak. I mean, it, it gets over 36, 38, we start hitting 40. It might be a little bit out of the range of what it's worth. And that's just to me, guys, it's just in my opinion. Because, like I said, I got to see the cash coming in and less expansion. The more they expand, the more money they're putting out, uh, the more chance they can get bit in the butt if these laws don't get passed and they're taking longer and longer. You know, that's the one thing that concerns me. Like Jim says, they uh still working on it, and that's our Congress for us and our Senate. <laughs> So we're going to scroll down because, that, like I said, I don't see too much news on it. And we're going to go down to the ratings. You can see the ratings are phenomenal on it all the way around 100%. Value growth and profitability are all in the A's from six months ago. I would imagine they'd be staying there today if they did a new factor on it. And then you go down to revenue year by year. It's been growing. For shares, they had that little pullback in 2019, but their structure's coming back on that, and that's starting to look solid on an uptrend. Earnings estimate. Now, they're not as strong as GRWG was, but they are looking to be do almost doubled by 2022 which to me is a safe estimate. You're not trying to double yourself up in one year, which is very risky, like I said, with this business, because you just never know with one grow to the next if you know you might have any problems, then it comes out to a dud. So we're gonna scroll down to, to momentum. And you can see the momentum, like I was talking about, the S&P 500, I mean, it's just, just smoking it. <laughs> yeah, it is. And that was an intentional pun. That yeah, was a nice we're, pun. <laughs> now we're going to go down the capital structure, everybody. Now, this is the difference between True Leaf and GRWG is the cash flow. The only thing that I can say that helps True Leaf over GRWG is that they have so many dispensaries spread out and they're still expanding. But like I said, they need to slow down, get those numbers reversed around on the debt and cash. You know, instead of being 265 in debt, get yourself 265 in cash and 193. So if anything goes wrong, you can pay your debt off and then you're still good and you're still in business. You know, that's to me, uh, I can't say it enough, it means everything to me. Cash in hand is king and stuff. So. Uh, Jim, you got anything you want to put in on, on yeah, truly? Sir? I think I think the edible that they're going to be putting out next year is going to be very profitable profitable for them too. The edible part. That's I kind of was yeah. reading a little article about that there, and I want to mention that uh, these four stocks that were mentioned were very bullish on 
they're probably some of our top tickers and this one here is TC and then F and we're gonna I'm gonna look at the chart and just kind of analyze it real fast here and I'm pulling up my this is called my SMA chart I like to look at it see where that 50 and that 200 are right now so let's we'll pull us back and turn this up to a year where are you baby We've had a nice little trend. You can see the trend for the last three months has been nothing but straight up from that last pullback. And, you know, low support on this thing is going to be like the previous high, like we did down here when we had that pullback to this previous high. I would say that would be a pretty drastic pullback if it did pull back to that $25 area. But it is kind of a double confirmation with this line right here. I'm liking this stock. We've had a nice little three black crows right here or three white soldiers on the daily and that needs to consolidate a little bit so I'm going to be looking right around 31 maybe the first support's going to be right here at 32.14 31.18 and I really want to see it hold in this pivot point channel low low supports right around the 29.13 to 30.08 they can pull back you can see it by the chart here just in the last three months they pull back but they recover very fast and it's usually from the previous highs and as you can see right here this is going to be your strong buy if it does knife it'll be drawn out of that channel so i want to try to keep it in that channel but for right here at 2750 would be a very strong buy if something happened to it but let's see if this 2913 will hold and let's start breaking some new high resistance on it i think we're going to go sideways like we did right in here like we kind of did you know it just needs to consolidate a little bit until the year, and then I'm going to be watching this one real close. Again, low support around 29.13. Then you got that second one right around 30.80, and then that first one's right around 31.18. If it, the 32.13 does not hold, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Cure Leaf. Let's have our specialists mention it. C U R C U R L F. All right, Cureleaf was one of the leaders here. We are looking at their website right now. They have a great grow. I mean, they are across the United States here and there. Uh, I believe they're in California. I believe they're in Florida. I believe they're in a couple of other mid-middle mid states. And I believe they're also in Nevada here with me and stuff so uh cure leaf we're gonna go ahead and pull up the chart jim yep there you go and once again everybody here we look at the daily back from march i mean you can't ask anything nicer for this sector you know just on an uptrend if you wanted to day trade it, there is day trades all the way through this, all the way to today's date. I mean, one thing we've been talking about in the room is if you don't see any news, the volume coming in is because the day traders are running it up. I mean, me and Jim talked about this last night on this. I mean, you'll see them occasionally that everybody's asking, hey, what's going on with the pod sectors? How come they're running today? And Basically, when I don't see any new news coming in right then and there, that's just telling me that, you know, it's day traders running the volume up, trying to scalp the play and stuff, which, you know, that's what trading's all about. So, you know, you can see there was definite moves. And then in August, it took that pullback. It was one of the laggers on the pullback before the comeback because they didn't really start till September. And they've been up on an uptrend since then. They've never broke down through the bottom of the trend lines. It's still in trend as far as I'm seeing, as my eye is looking at it. So Cure Leaf is a nice, strong company to look at. We are close to the 100% fib lines. So we know we always are cautious about pullbacks on this, as you can see it did on Friday after it hit that new high of highs at 13.09. And then it started to pull back during the day and, you know, doing a little recovery. Cure Leaf, uh, True Leaf 
and Planet 13, they do not trade after hours too much. I mean, I think, uh, let me look at one thing real fast, everybody. Yeah. GRWG does trade in after hours. But these three do not trade. So where they finish on Fridays is where they're at. So then, it, you know, if there's news coming in and you got all the Canadian pot stocks running because they do trade in the pre-market and after hours, you can guarantee to look at these American pot stocks and you're probably going to find a play on it. And it, like I said, if you want to day trade them, you can get in as a day trade and get out. But if you do hold them in a the long term, everybody... Like me and Jim will always say, please do your due diligence and read on these companies and make sure that's where you want to invest your money. You know, I can't say strongly say that anymore about all these pot stocks because tip, typically holding them long term, you better have a lot of patience and a lot, a lot of nerves to stay in them and wait for all the news or bad news coming out on them. So. I'm going to get back a little bit to cure leaf here on my 15 minute chart. Uh, we're in between the pivot and my first resistance line there. I like this for a play because we have so much room for a scalp here. And you guys, I would watch this come Monday and see what kind of volume comes in because of these pullbacks that we're looking at. So I'm going to switch over to the news and Jim is just so fast that's usually not the case <laughs> okay so we're looking at their news and and uh, there's not much we got a strong buy on them by some uh, analysts and that was on November 12th so that was a good week ago as you can see they've took in an uptrend since the upgrades on them and everything and not too bad i mean the analysts are on board just hope hopefully nobody overrates them and we have the stupid runs like we did two years ago with tilray and and cgc going up so remarkable numbers that should have never been hit so we're going down to our rating summary nice rating summary of it six months ago i mean the growth is awesome it's still got some good growth in it. The value is still awesome on it. I'm sure that'll be getting an upgrade on their next factor grades. And you can see that Wall Street and the other boys are very bullish on it. So now we're going to go ahead and scroll down. Revenue year by year on an uptrend. Can't beat that. Uh, earnings per share. You know, that's hard. Because Cureleaf does spend a lot of money, you guys. And like I said, if you're going to expand, then your earnings per share are going to show it at the end of the year. And obviously, Cureleaf does because they do do a lot of expansion. All right, we're going to go down to earnings estimate. Now, boy, oh boy, they're looking for something big here in the next year. They're looking to double their uh, sales. Okay, so they got something up their sleeves. Are it's going to make them fall flat on their face, one or the other, you know, because we're still waiting for federal government. I mean, you can put money everywhere you want, but if you don't have the sales to come behind it, then you're going to be hurting. So they are taking a risk, and you see in 2022, they didn't raise it up as much and stuff. You know, they didn't double their amount at all. I think they only took like, uh, what's that estimate? About half, maybe. So they're being a little precautious going into 2022. So it sounds like they got some big plans coming for 2021 to where they think they're going to double their profits and their sales. So we're going to scroll down a little more to the momentum. You know, their momentum name is best as GRWG and True Leaf, but for the S&P, they are still on top of it and doing very well. And we're going to go down the capital structure. Now you can see what I mean. They are in a lot of debt because of their expansion and everything else. And they 
nowhere near enough cash to cover their debt. So that's the only caution I have on truly on, uh, I'm sorry, on cure leaf, everybody. Otherwise I'm going to let Jim talk about the charts a little bit on this one and we'll get to our last one. Yeah. You know, we've talked about the politics of, of this marijuana sector and that's what it's running on right now. Uh, I think it, with a plus the increased popularity um, I do have concerns that this is probably our fourth one on the list that I'd be looking at, but on pullbacks, I'd be playing it, probably looking for support just because, you know, we're, we're at highs right now. I think we can pull back just because of the capital structure of the company. It kind of makes you a little leery, but we are a bullish on this trade. And we do, like he said, man, that, that uh, estimate for next year, they got something up their sleeve here go out and say they're going to double within a year in sales. So we're going to go ahead and pull up the chart. We're going to look at that 200 again. We can see we had a golden cross back here on uh, uh, 7720. Had a little golden cross back in there, and we've had some bounces, and it pulled back once to that 200. That 200 keeps rising up, same as that 50. So I'd rather use the 50 as a support level if it did become – down we're at i mean this thing keeps going up it's had a great week last week as you can see and i think it's also maybe going to consolidate to the right we did break out of that channel so let's magnify let's go to the 20 day and 20 day will time to give us a different story i got two supports in here and i got a pivot point that pivot point area is going to be right here at 12 12. i like to see that hold and then your first, your second support's going to be here at 1229, and then that first one, we can double bottom right here. We do have a little hammer at the end of the day, so I think it can probably pull back and hit the 1254, and then find some kind of channel to the right. Any low support is going to be right here at 1168 for a strong buy. That's how I kind of look at it, because I see these other tops. I'm probably the fourth one on this uh, alert list that we're going to give but I still like to play it if it does pull back or if we have sharp knives as you can see every time it knives it retraces back up and I think we can go ahead and have a double bottom here triple bottom and then find a channel to the right between twelve fifty and thirteen dollars if not it'll pull back to this fifty right here and bounce off that and this is on the twenty day one hour chart and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Planet uh, P L N H F, Planet Nine or something like that. Let you have Planet at it. Planet Thirteen. All right, you guys. I have been talking about this company for months. I mean, I know people have heard me. I know a few of our traders and I love stocks have been following me on this. Uh, they've been in and out. And uh, I'm going to start back here in, oh, we'll go over a little bit on the, as Jim's bringing up their website and everything. This company is in Las Vegas, you guys. Of course, I am biased. I am in Nevada. But this company has set the precedence of what the dispensaries are going to look like in the future. They have a pizzeria in it. They have museums in it. They have where you can watch them make the extracts. You can watch them grow. They have their own grows. They produce their own products. This company all around, hands down, did it right. They have just the one company right now in Nevada. And we're going to show you why I like what they're doing here in a second after I go over the chart a little bit. And then we'll bring up the news and everything. So, Jim, if you want to bring up the chart. Thank you, sir. We're going to come back here when it was at 63 cents, you guys, back in March 19th. I have been playing this thing in and out. I wish I would have just held it and, you know, just load it up. But I have to take precautions all the time with this sector because we know how it acts. But, you know. There's always that old saying, you can always jump back in, which I have been. And then I've been playing it, you know, from July. I took that ran up, got out, let it pull back a little, jump back in, 
over and over again and then just kind of wrote it from uh, around three fifty, four dollars and then I believe I was talking to Jim about it a lot and he was starting to like it a lot. He even got on a couple and did a couple of videos on Planet 13 about some uh, strike price areas over $5 and it busted five and ran to 640. Oh, for a good solid week, I want to say, wasn't it, Jim? After yep. uh, it was a good, did that chart. Good alert. And I'll post the yeah. video that I did previously in the link down below. Yeah, sounds like a winner. Yep. So since then, since it's hit its high, which has made its new FIB high at 640, I believe it is, it's pulled back and then came back on the daily. You know, it got the news when Tilray and Alfie or APHA came out with their news. So it got that nice candle jump on last Thursday, I believe it was. That is... Uh, my date there 1216 that was a beautiful jump on it to come back i know a couple traders uh in i love stocks jumped in at around 520 ran it up to six dollars as a day trade and got out and made their money so i was very happy that i was able to give these alerts and people were jumping on them and and getting some money and the reason I talk about these American stocks today, you guys, a lot is because these are going to be the futures of the American companies when we get all legalized throughout the government. And hopefully it'll be here in the next year. We have two laws sitting up in the Senate with the SAFE Act and the MORE Act. Both of them will help out the business a lot. Uh, but we need the federal government really just to get on board and stop messing around and get this all legalized and decriminalized off their federal books. You know, it, it, it's time. You know, I can't s stress it anymore. A lot of people have been waiting for this day for, Jesus, 30 years, you guys. So, you know, it, it is a big thing that's going on right now with all these uh, acts that are up in the Senate. But don't expect nothing in the two weeks coming we got christmas we got new year's we got the stimulus package they're trying to get passed jim told me today that they passed it i guess everybody's going to get a little money so you know don't get too excited unless you hear something about the tilray and apha merger and don't expect too big of a pop on that when they do sign the deal you guys because like me and Jim were talking about, you know, the moves are already priced in. And, you know, you're not going to see too much more after that's signed. you probably see a day trade in it and everything. And that's probably going to be about it. So now we're going to move over to the news. <clears throat> gotcha. You can see they, on December 8th, they got the best in the class award. And they got a bunch of awards in December 12th secured three awards in the Las Vegas Jack Kerr Cup. So basically, uh, I know a lot of the viewers that do follow the marijuana sector will know what the Jack Kerr Cup is. It's a big prestige event for for all the growers. If you win that cup, you know, you, you pretty much set your precedence in the marijuana stocks and the grow area. So they're doing really good. Like I said, this company produces all their own stuff. They do everything on site. I mean, you can go watch it yourself. I mean, I can't stress how much I love this company. All right, we're gonna go down to the rating summary, Jim. Wall Street Journal, that's a very bullish uh, thing on it from six months ago. I'm sure they're not changing that. I'm sure their growth will be about the same because, like I said, they keep their growth low. But I'm going to show you why that's a good thing. Their profitability is a B, which will probably be raised up to an A. And their value will probably be raised up to, no doubt, to a B or A here in the next month or so. Okay, we're going to scroll down to revenue. You can see their revenue in this last year is just screamed past last year's revenue. So that's an awesome deal. 
earnings per share, you guys. The reason we're seeing this right now because of all their expansions. This is a new building that's just been out for the last year. They just finalized everything, getting everything done. And they expanded with one grow in Nevada right there for this place off site. So that's why their EPS is down just a little bit. We should see some increases going into 2021 through 2022. So we're going to go scroll down to earnings estimate. And you can see there they got some great plans in the next year. They also are going to double what they are in sales. So I like that. And I don't see any reason why this company cannot do that, especially if Vegas gets opened back up and all the visitors come back in because they did make a lot of money, but a lot of people like this place locally. So they still do get a lot of business. So we're going to go down to the momentum. You see it's just destroying the S&P over the last year. And then we'll scroll down to our last thing here for capital structure. Market cap of $1.04 billion. Total debt $21.32. Cash in hand $56 million. I love this, you guys. Uh, their enterprise value is a billion dollars. Uh, they probably hit that mark here in the next couple of years without a problem. And like I said, they have set the precedence of how these dispensaries and grows are going to go over the next few years. California is already uh, mocking them with a new grow center over there. And they also, this place also has a place where you can smoke. And it's just an all around good deal. And you can see that, like I said, their uh, money is just on time to where their growth, if they wanted to grow, they can have no problem growing at all. Jim, I'm going to turn it over to you on the chart and let people know what you think. Sir. All right. Well, like, like we said, this thing bounced up pretty good from my last talk with him about it. And we were down here at 504. We had that good three-day run. She's consolidated a little bit, so we're going to kind of use this as a reference tool for a double bottom support. That's going to be right at 518 if it does pull back. That'll be your low support. We'll change that into a little red line. I want to raise the bar on it as we go into the new year. I do believe this stock can get to 10. This is my long-term target, but we got to break this double top up here at 640. Uh, I like the company. I like the fact that he mentioned when uh, the vaccine and everybody gets vaccinated, they're going to be wanting to party. People are going to want to go to to Vegas. What stays in Vegas stays in Vegas. So they're going to be getting stoned and then coming back home and doing their ordinary job. I'm excited about this company also because I like the idea of having this all in one huge building. You can be entertained. You can eat. You can, uh, after you have your little party you can eat and get the munchies out you have time to kind of clear your mind before you can get out on the road again we don't advise anybody to drive while they're stoned that's that's a fact because they're still going to yep. be strict about that you know be but we do like this sector into 2021 so we're going to kind of think down here at this lower support level at 516 will be a strong buy if it does pull back it can pull back in a day any pullbacks like we've said have been a good bounce up back to resistance levels. The resistance level we're going to be breaking next week is going to be right around the 596, 614, and then try to break that 637 double top with a strong buy down here at 518 to hold on to it for a swing back up to the top. But then if we get back to that lower support at 518, the next resistance will be this one right here at 594. Like I said, we got to break that and then move on up. I got a $10 target easy on this stock into 2021. It's probably the undervalued one of the three that we did. The other three that we did mention, along with Cureleaf, is going to be on a bottom of our list. And then we, I really like that GRWG. I really like that a lot. On the pullbacks, it seems like it just has great runs. It's you know, It seems like the momentum and the volume is there. 
So I think that'll be it for the cannabis sector today. I really appreciate Doobie coming in here and talking. He is, you know, I've been trading them for a long time. I was the first, you know, when they first started coming out, I was trading them, and there was very few of them. Him and I agree totally that there's going to be a lot of merging coming in, and we need to be watching Tilray, and that's probably going to be my next one I would add to this list for uh, a good bounce into 2021. And I'll let you have the yeah. closing. I'll let you have the closing arguments, and we'll kind of keep it short. And we really do appreciate you coming to Lie Love Stocks and being our special guest on the cannabis sector. Well, thanks, Jim. I appreciate you guys having me in the room and everything, man. And I'd like to give a big shout out to I Live Stocks to you guys. I mean, it's a great place to learn a lot of things. If you're a newbie and everything, they will teach you a lot about what you need to know and going into. Uh, I just want to uh, second what Jim said about Tilray. Tilray is in a great spot right now because its FIB levels are so low. They're between their 23 and 38% FIB, so it has a lot of room to move on some good news and everything else. So that's about it for me, you guys, and thanks for having me, Jim, and everybody have a great rest of your weekend. Always remember, I love stocks. Hit this little Twitter. We got some links over here where Miss Vegas is the money flow queen. She has a stock twits link, and she also posts her alerts on Twitter. Hit that follow button. We'd appreciate that. Also on the website, you can see my little setup over here. Follow me on Stock Twits. I'm posting alerts in here quite often. And we want to wish everybody uh, a happy Merry Christmas that's coming up and a happy New Year. And let's really look into this sector along with the car sector, the EV car sector. I think it's going to be very hot. And we're going to have a lot of mergers. I want to repeat that. There's going to be a lot of business structure going on in the cannabis sector into 2021. And... I thought this day would never happen, and, you know, it's just getting better and better day by day. We just need government to kind of be a catalyst for the next move. I love stocks. What the hell are you trying? <laughs>